Hello everyone and welcome to Solar Projections. My name is Chandrika Narayanan Mohan and I'm a poet living in Dublin who loves writing poems about science, particularly about space. Today we're here at Dunsink Observatory to talk about Solar Projections, a little project for Poetry Day Ireland. The theme of Poetry Day Ireland is written in the stars and today we're going to talk about poetry connecting to the star that we know the most, the sun. We're going to write and share some poems about the future, about the future that we're projecting, the future that we're dreaming of, we're then going to learn how to make a DIY solar projector. We're going to take a picture of a poem with the sun projected onto it, and then we're going to upload it to social media to create a digital archive for this project. It might sound complicated at the moment. We're going to go it step by step so that you can join us and share all your images and be part of this wonderful project for this week of Poetry Day Ireland and going into the future as well. So first we're going to talk to Dr. Sophie Murray of Dunsink Observatory to introduce us to the space, the work they do here on this very conveniently sunny day. Hi, I'm Dr. Sophie Murray and I work here at Dunsink Observatory. Dunsink was founded back in 1785 and since then it's been a centre for, for research and public engagement um, ever since. It's steeped in history, there's been so many interesting events that have happened over the years in the observatory. Dunsink used to set Dublin time, for example, um, up into 1916 and that's part of our scientific heritage but also our literature heritage since it's mentioned in James Joyce's Ulysses. We've had many famous researchers um, cross our doors over the time. One of our previous directors, Sir William Rowan Hamilton, invented equations called quaternions, which were really the starting point of modern day algebra. And they're still used today, you know, equations from the 19th century, used in computer games and graphic design and even rockets and spacecraft um, orientations. And speaking of space research, um, Dunsink became part of Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies in the 1940s and that really kicked off a new era of research at the observatory. We were involved in the Apollo missions, in the space shuttle missions and in the ESA and NASA missions of today in the 21st century. We have many different researchers working on different areas of astrophysics, planetary scientists, people working in star formation with the new James Webb Space Telescope and solar physicists as well. So I'm a solar physicist, I study the sun and how it impacts the Earth in the form of something called space weather. And that was very much an inspiration for this solar projections project. So step one of solar projections is starting with the poetry itself. We're going to ask you to write a very short poem or even a few thoughts about the future, your ideas for the future in any way, shape or form. It could be the things you're looking forward to now, your hopes or your dreams for the future of yourself, your family or even just the world in general. It could be as big or as small as you like. You can also choose poems or writings from anyone else about the same topic. But the idea is that it should be small enough to fit on a piece of paper so that it goes into the solar projector which we will show you how to make in a little bit. So myself and poets Molly Toomey and Owen McAvoy are going to share some poems to inspire you hopefully or to share our ideas anyways of what our hopes for the future are through poetry. So the poem I've chosen I wrote on a plane uh, on the first trip outside of Ireland in two years and I suppose for me when thinking about the future uh, the most important thing that I've been thinking about anyways is looking forward to spending time with the people I love. So this is a poem that I wrote on the plane heading to London and it's called In Bulk. I am on the way to love. I am sun-kissed and cloud-hugged. I am passport-laden and belted up. I am sister-bound and soulmate stretched. I am baking soda and vinegar volcano. I am fizz and roar and it's scrubbing away the empty years and the hollow days and we won't talk about that now. Not under a violet sky, not under an imboke moon. Winter has ended and I'm on the way to love. And now we're going to hear some poems from Molly Toomey and Owen McAvoy. First up we have Molly Toomey coming to us from the Crawford Observatory at University College Cork. After her, we'll have Owen McAvoy, who's going to be talking a little bit about why he chose his poem and then sharing his poem with us in Irish. And um, so this poem is called Kinsale, and it's about seeing a concrete um, house in Kinsale and imagining a life there, um, feeling a bit hard done by just with the housing crisis and how difficult it is, it is to get housing. Um, and then being kind of called out on my own privilege um, and recognising that we need to build a future that's inclusive of everyone. 
and um, that takes into consideration things like cl climate change but also takes into consideration accessibility so pin sale mostly i love you when i'm giving out about the concrete garden of a single story house where marigolds foxgloves and asters could shelter honeybees a pond could refuge leather jacks and newts or an evergreen hold red squirrels the nest of a collared dove if we owned that bungalow i'd garnish our soup with wild garlic caramelize our onions honey glaze fresh beets Maybe we could raise hens, quail, or geese. Picture us waking up to the caddywake song, a stroll from the port where we greet by name the fishmonger, dog walkers, and rose scented florist. How unfair to be stuffed in an apartment we can't afford. Stacks of Tupperware leaning on cabinet doors. You listen to me bark on and on like a silly fox before you reply that the slope from the porch to the road looks fit for a wheelchair, fibromyalgia or brittle bones. How can anything flourish or live if we don't allow space for one another to grow. My God, I'd create an Eden on our front lawn. Don Chin, Mar is Don Groy, Agus, Kirinche Shister and Amata Kate, Er Hadriff, Ach, is Guyeta on Fresh and Galanha and Kadriff Shinerai, Tarun, Dinta, Agam, Lena Forti, Galanha and Kadriff Shinerai, Pijo. Machine and fire has to be on the enough, then chunks could also have solar projections. Don the Jack. Re Rua May, the Glove Queen, the Hlave. Spade Ganyale, Eve Have, the Hu. Lahain Shinne, Love, Er Love, Asar Ra, Erbine, Ru. Okay, so now we've had a bit of inspiration with the poems. We're on to step two, which is the science bits. We're going to build a DIY solar projector with Brendan Owens. Hello. Hi, Jandrika. So I've got all my bits and pieces here. This is something that hopefully you can find like lying around the house, that sort of thing. But maybe just before getting started, I'll just explain the idea behind it. Here's one we made earlier. Um, so this is a solar projector. And normally we'd say never look directly at the sun. Bad idea, uh, it can blind you, it's not good. But if you use a solar projector, you can let the light shine through a tube and you're gonna face in the opposite direction so you can project an image of the sun uh, onto a screen. So we'll show you how that works in a moment. Uh, but just, it is the safest way to safely view the sun. Um, so yeah, got some bits and pieces here. So things you'll need, uh, some tape, scissors, uh, a piece of card, which is going to act as a, a sun shade and a poster tube and uh, making sure that you've got both ends off so that the light can get through um, and a piece of tin foil and finally something uh, light like a piece of card to project your image of your sun uh, onto your sun picture. So first thing we have to do is pop our tin foil piece. We've just got a square tin foil. And Chandrika, I'm just gonna ask if you could hold that down for me. And I've got some tape. So I'm just gonna tape it down. And what we're trying to do here is make sure that you create the smallest hole possible for your solar projector. It's a pinhole projector. So the smaller that hole is, the clearer and crisper your image is gonna be. Now it's only gonna let through a little bit of light, but the sun is so bright as long as you don't have clouds in the way, you should be fine. So that's just for now. You might want to secure it a little bit more, but that's what we, what we can do. And then I've got a little badge. And we can do is take the pin from the badge and use that to make just a little hole uh, just in the center. It doesn't have to be very big. You can wiggle it around just a little bit. And that's your pinhole, your pinhole projector. Uh, and now the next bit is to make your shade. Um, so you want it so that it's like this one. So it's gonna provide a little bit of a shadow so you get to see your sun image. 
So, uh, now we just have to, uh, we might, I guess, ask for your help if that's yep. okay. Thanks a million. We'll just pop this down. I'm just gonna draw a circle around here. And then we can cut out from the middle and you can cut out in a, in a cross shape. And you wanna go a little bit further out than your circle that you've drawn to allow the poster tube to fit through. Once you've done your cross shape, you're gonna do a few more diagonal ones. And that should allow the cardboard to bend and for the poster tube to pass through. And then you're gonna need uh, a lot more tape to hand again, and that'll allow you to attach the two pieces. So you might wanna fold it in a little bit so it's ready to go. So then you should end up with something a little bit like this. It's kind of like you've uh, cut out a cross and then a bit of a star shape, and that should allow the poster tube to, to go through. So let's give that a go. And if it doesn't work first time, you can just make your cuttings a little bit wider. So the thing is, you'll notice that you have uh, some gaps in here. So we won't do it for a build here, but what I recommend doing is getting tape and making sure that you cover those gaps. Uh, you could use masking tape, but if you've got any dark tape, electrical tape or anything like that, it just means that the only light you're gonna get on the other end is gonna be your sunlight. So the last piece that you need uh, is a piece of card. Uh, you're going to have the sun at your back and you're gonna have the sunlight coming through. It takes a little bit of, you know, for jangling to kind of get it in the right place. You kind of have to move it around. Um, you can look for your shadow to see what direction the sun is in. So your shadow always points in exactly the opposite direction uh, to the sun. And then you can project it. And also for this screen as well, it helps to have it maybe inside a box or even surrounded by some cloth. So you may want to sort of create a little, a little shade for yourself. So this will provide a little bit of shadow and shade, um, but a box will do even better. Uh, and then you just have to Search for, search around, and you should see a disc of the sun, probably about stamp sized with this setup, a little bit smaller. So that's what you're looking for with your solar projector. That's great. Uh, and then we're gonna move on to step three, where we're gonna put your poem in the place of the paper. And we're gonna show Brendan running around a field, trying to find the sun and projecting it onto our poem next. So just trying to get it so we get the little pinhole projecting the little disc of the sun onto the poem. Just have to get things lined up just nicely. And then as well, you don't have to worry about having any damage to your eye. The sun's at your back and you feel the heat of the sun on you. You'll know you're in the right direction. You can look for your shadow as well and that can help you line this up perfectly so you can get a, a nice clear image uh, of the disc of the sun. So now we can see the light of the sun and here it is, it's shining through and it's made its 150 million kilometer journey from the sun to here on Earth. And uh, it's a pretty quiet sun today. There, there aren't any sunspots. Uh, so it's an unblemished disk of light. And that light took, uh, took eight minutes to make its 150 million kilometer journey to us. Um, and it's illuminating this beautiful poetry and pretty unblemished and perfect light from the sun. Our poets wanted to get involved and build their own solar projectors as well. But first, Owen wanted to make sure that our Irish-speaking friends out there weren't left out. I heard it. Tommy and Shaw, Le Rodan Ashton and Shaw, our Wahalish and Chunsk build solar projections, Le Chandrike. I can share the Tigesh now. Don Bug is Tissamuska. Paul is a Gluduch. I can share the two tubes. Shachan. The two tape team player and tube, Le Chan Solo Suchinalamach. I can share the war and tube. The two shot. In our days, we've grown to Paul Bug B. Dickinson, her war and rather less snotted. So, we're going to do this by doing an Asia for a drone grain, and we're going to do an elegant cheese and tube, a drone, the drone. So, we're going to picture in Bug, the Nigerian air, the drone, hein. So, we're going to do a real to hein, and we're going to do a lot of the answer of the airfad. Back at the Crawford Observatory in Cork, 
Molly Toomey is making her own solar projector, as you can see here. So she's built it now, and now she's going to project the sun onto her poem Kinsale that she read out for us earlier. So we've chosen a poem, we've learned how to build a DIY solar projector, we've wedged our poem somewhere into the projector and taken a picture of it. So the final step is to be part of the digital archive, which sounds more complicated than it really is. Basically, we just want you to take a picture of the poem with the sun projected onto it, and then post it onto social media with the hashtag PDI solar projections. It'll be written here as well. Um, and the idea is that when you search for this hashtag, you'll be able to see your poem amongst other people's and everyone else who wants to share it as well. So that's it. If it's not sunny right now, that's okay. You can do this throughout the week or any time really to be part of this project. But we'd love for you to try and share it this week, if possible, as part of Poetry Day Ireland. So thank you so much, everyone who's been involved. Thank you to Poetry Ireland for funding this specific project through their Bright Ideas Fund, to Dunsink Observatory and Trinity for supporting this as partners, to Molly and Owen, our other poets, to the wonderful Sophie and Brendan and Alberto behind the camera as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we hope you've learned a bit about science, a bit about the sun, and enjoyed a bit of poetry, if nothing else. Happy Poetry Day, Ireland.